Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman. And today, once again, we're going to be looking at the perimeter of rectangles. But this time around, our perimeters involve uh, measurements that use fractions and mixed numbers. We are in our home links, Unit 8, Lesson 6. So let's take a look. Use a formula to find the perimeter of each rectangle. Show your work in the space provided. Now, there are a couple of formulas we can use to find the perimeter of a rectangle when we know both side measurements. Okay? The first one is just an addition problem. Length plus length plus width plus width equals perimeter. Four sides to a rectangle, so you're going to be adding four numbers or four add-ins to get your sum, which is your perimeter. But if you know that you're adding two lengths and adding two widths together, Another way you can approach this problem is taking just the length and the width, adding those two numbers together, and then multiplying those numbers by 2. That's what these parentheses tell us to do when you stick the number 2 on the outside. It says multiply. Length plus width times 2 will give you your same answer. Okay. So let's take a look at problem number 1. It says the length of this rectangle is 3 and 3 sixth yards. The width is one-sixth of a yard, okay? So we can approach this one of two ways. We can either add all four numbers together, or we can add the two numbers together, the length and the width, and then multiply that number by two. Let's try the first approach. Now, I showed you the formula as a number sentence, side to side, but when I actually add these numbers together, I'm going to do it vertically. So. First time around, 3 and 3 sixths plus another 3 and 3 sixths plus one more sixth plus another sixth. That's going to give us our perimeter. Okay? So when I'm adding fractional parts, and as I laid out my problem vertically, I lined up my place values. The fractional parts of a mixed number are a separate place value compared to the whole numbers. And when I am looking at those fractional parts, I'm only going to be concerning myself with the numerators, the 3 and the 1, okay? So 3 plus 3 is 6, add more, two more 1s in there, and I'm going to get a total of 8. 8 what? 8 sixths. And then, of course, 3 plus 3 is 6. Now, 6 and 8 sixths can't stand, meaning that you can't have a mixed number with an improper fraction. So i got to take this number 8 sixths and convert it. Okay, I'm going to make it into a mixed number by figuring out how many groups of 6 can I get out of 8. Well, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 is too big. So the best I can do is one group of 6 with two left over, or one and two sixths. So I have a mixed number, one and two sixths, and I'm going to add that to my whole number, six, and that's going to give me a total of seven and two sixths, and that's my perimeter. The perimeter is seven and two sixths of a yard. Now, later on in your career, maybe in fifth grade, you might be asked to put that in the uh, lowest common denominator. Two six would be represented as one third. But we're not there yet, are we? Uh, so let's take a look at that problem again, but this time we're going to use multiplication. Length plus width times two. So again, I'm going to add three and three sixths plus a sixth. And I'm going to multiply those two numbers once they're added together times 2. Well, again, I'm just adding my numerators together because I'm just adding an extra sixth to this 3 and 3 sixths. So that's going to give me 3 and 4 sixths. Okay, and I'm going to multiply that by 2. Okay, now when I multiply a mixed number together, I can use the same strategies that I use when I multiply a large digit number. Like, for example, partial products. When I multiply 3 and 4 sixths times 2, that's the same as saying 3 times 2 
and four sixths times two. Okay, three times two is six. Four sixths times two, and again, I'm only multiplying the numerator here. Four times two is eight. Eight sixths, and if we add those two partial products together, we get that ugly number of six and eight sixths, which we converted over here to seven and two sixths. Okay, so either strategy will work to get you your perimeter, your sum. Okay, but let's take a look at another problem, like problem number three. You've been given the perimeter already. So instead of finding the perimeter, you're trying to find the missing measure of a side, okay? Now we're provided with some information, and that is the length of this rectangle in number three, for example, is 25 hundredths of a kilometer. And the entire perimeter is 74 hundredths of a kilometer. So let's use some space over here. So again, applying my formula, of length plus length plus width plus width, equals perimeter, what I have to do is I have to uh, eliminate what I know to figure out what I don't know. So the length of the side of the rectangle is 25 hundredths. So 25 hundredths plus 25 hundredths plus something plus something else equals 74 hundredths. Now when I have an addition problem with missing add-ins, another way of looking at that is just to call it a subtraction problem. Okay? And I'm going to put these amounts in parentheses to help us. So what is 25 hundredths plus 25 hundredths? Well, if I have two quarters, that would give me 50 cents, right? So that would be 50 hundredths. So 50 hundredths plus something, which is the combination of width plus width, is going to give us 74 hundredths. So I'm going to just turn that around, okay, and make it a subtraction problem. 74 hundredths minus 50 hundredths leaves us with something, we'll call it, I don't know, M for missing width, okay? And again, when I'm subtracting fractions, if the denominators are the same, all I'm doing is really subtracting the numerators. So 74 minus 50, that would give us 24 hundredths. Okay? Now we're not done yet, because 24 hundredths equals w plus w. Okay? Or w times 2. Because when I add two numbers together and those numbers are the same, it's like multiplying it times 2. So now I have a problem. I know that the width times, the times 2, or the width added to itself, equals 24 hundredths. Now just like I turned around my addition problem into a subtraction problem, I can turn this multiplication problem with a missing factor into a division problem, okay, by just flipping it around. Instead of w times 2 gives me 24, or width plus width gives me 24, I can turn it around and say 24 hundredths divided by 2 equals what? What's my missing quotient? Now again, just like we do with multiplication of fractions. When we divide fractions, we're, again, we're only looking at the numerator when we are considering what to do with that uh, whole number. So I'm only thinking 24 divided by 2. Now 24 divided by 2 would give me 12 because 12 plus 12 gives me 24. So 12 hundredths plus 12 hundredths would give me 24 hundredths. So, 
After doing all that, we have determined that our missing measurement, the width, is 12 hundredths of a kilometer. Okay. Now, if I'm still not sure if that answer is correct, I could just take it over here and plug it in to my addition problem. Okay, 25 plus 25 plus 12 plus 12. Well, we determined that 25 plus 25 is 50. 12 plus 12 is going to give us 24. And if I add 50 plus 24, you guessed it, gives us 74. So these perimeter problems are no different than the ones you've already been uh, exposed to in previous uh, units. It's just that we've just added an extra layer. Now that you've learned how to deal with fractions and mixed numbers with addition and multiplication and division and subtraction, you can now apply those new skills uh, and apply them towards another skill you've collected, which is finding the perimeter of a rectangle. Okay. Now the last thing here, we have some straight up multiplication problems with some fractions. Now we've been already doing some multiplication with fractions, but just for f the fun of it, let's knock out one of these problems. Let's do 9 times 4 fifths. Well, 9 times 4 is 36, so that would give me an improper fraction of 36 fifths. Now i got to figure out how many groups of 5 can I get out of 36. Now, 35 is a multiple of 5, because I know that 7 times 5 is 35. So that stands the reason that I can get 7 groups out of 5 out of 36, because it's only one more. That leaves me with a remainder. Now I could represent that remainder like that, 7 remainder 1, or I can show it in fractional form, 7 and 1 fifth. When I have 36 fifths, I can group them into 7 groups of 5, or 7 groups of 5 fifths, and then I have 1 fifth left over. I hope this video was helpful. I hope that once you've watched it, you have all of your questions answered, your confidence level is high, and then you're just going to attack this home links no problem. But if that's not the case, well, then you need to go and talk to your math teacher. Uh, your living, breathing, physically available math teacher. Now, these videos that I make for you guys are very helpful, but I can't answer any of your specific questions, okay? You have to find someone to do that for you. And they are happy to help you if they know you need help. So please ask questions. So until we talk again, friends, have a good day and good luck. Thanks.